Andre Norman, and I just want to say thank you for joining Second Acts. And today we have one of the greatest entrepreneurs in the nation coming to join us. And this message is not just for people who are incarcerated. This message is not for people who are just locked in an eight by 10 foot cell. This message is for everybody and anybody who feels trapped and isolated. We want you to know that we care about you. We're reaching out to you. And these tools and these steps are for anybody, anywhere, anytime. So they work. Inside of prison, they work in the community. They'll work wherever you are. They're not confined. Knowledge knows no box. So mm. don't put it in a box. Once you get it, it's yours. Mm. I used to watch those commercials. The more you know, the further you go. This is real. And today we're going to bring you the real. So if you're in a penitentiary, in a forestry camp, you're at your office, you're at your house, it don't matter where you are. We're coming for you. And I'm glad that you're here with us because this is a together thing. Unity works. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I want to give all thanks and praise to God Elohim for this platform allowing me to share my experiences so hopefully it can impact others. Now, I just want to let you know that our primary audience are people in prison. Mm -hmm. So I spent 14 years locked up. Mm -hmm. And so I got a heart for that. Fair. And I want people inside behind these walls, 2.2 million, to know that there's other options beyond mm -hmm. going back. Because going back is just like not a good thing for mm -hmm. family or community. But this isn't just for people locked in a cell. There are people in prison in bad jobs. Mm -hmm. There are people in prison locked in depression and addiction. There are people in prison who are just locked in spaces and places they can't get out of. And a cell would be a lot easier for them, mm -hmm. true talk. Because they're walking around amongst free people locked in their spirit mm -hmm. or locked in their mind. So this is definitely for people who are in cages, mm -hmm. but it's also for people who are in prison, which is a larger sense. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, for me, like growing up as a, a young adult, I was out in the streets going to different events, but I learned really early how to generate income while being out there. So when I look back in my life, I ask myself, how did I get in a position to be able to not be in the same position as my, my peers that weren't doing it as well? And I realized that I had mentors. My mentors helped me make sure I didn't have a, a poor mindset. And he always told me poor was an acronym for passing over opportunities repeatedly. And when I realized that framework of passing over rep opportunities repeatedly, I made sure that whenever there was an opportunity, I identified if this was going to serve me or be something that was going to bring me back or be a detriment to my life. Whether it's through um, events, whether it's through business, whether it's through anything, I made sure I used that framework with everything I did. So that, that was that was one of the major pillars for my growth and development in the early stages. Give me a shout out to the give me the first mentor, the first group of mentors. <laughs> yeah, well, my first mentor's name is Jason McGill. Yeah, okay. he, shout out to Jay. It's not like I, it's not like I, I was out there searching for mentors. I believe God puts people in your in your life for a specific reason. But it's our job to identify and extract what those reasons are, so we can be able to tap into it. So by God's grace, Jason McGill came in my life. He liked what I was doing on my own, but he realized I had I had opportunities waiting for me that I needed to tap into. My first mentor was named Dominic Williams. Mm -hmm. He was a local stick-up kid, mm -hmm. and he taught me how to do stick-ups. See? <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's interesting, yo. So whether somebody realizes or not, they have mentors. They might have negative influences, or they might have positive influences. Typically, we use the word mentor has a positive connotation, but I think it's very key for people to realize how important it is to have a positive mentor in their life. Making a distinction is huge key. because I'd have done anything to hang out with Dominic. See? And I happens. did almost everything to hang out with See? him. See? See? And he got me in prison. See? So tell us your journey. Yeah, so it started off business-wise. First off, I, I consider myself somebody who's really analytical so i'm really i'm kind of different on that aspect so they call me mr document the process so i documented everything i've done for the last 12 years of my entrepreneurship and i like to show people better than i can tell them and through that process of documentation i realized that i started off my journey it wasn't selling products online it actually started in high school i started selling candy in high school <laughs> a lot, i know a lot of people can relate with that situation i found an opportunity where my dad, it was very difficult to ask my dad for money. Even though he had it, well, I'm Nigerian. Even <laughs> you know, get a Nigerian dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I asked my dad for money, and it was like, it was a difficult process <laughs> to try to ask for money, right? What so was his typical response? It was, it was basically an encapsulated form, uh, you got to work for it. <laughs> so I, I'm not mad at it. But the, the jobs and tasks that he wanted me to do, I really, really, really wasn't interested in. However... I had to figure out my own way to generate income. So 
I found an opportunity. One, I realized what I, I like. I like candy. I enjoy candy. I have a sweet tooth. Right. In order for me to pay for my candy, I turned that, that uh, I will consider my um, that liability of me always wanting to purchase candy into an asset by purchasing candy to sell it. And whatever profit I made from it, I can actually pay for my own candy. Right. So that was the situation. I went to Smart Final, bought wholesale candy, priced it out, went to the school, and supplied the demand. They didn't have any vending machines at the time. They didn't have any um, candy stores at the time. So I was literally the plug, <laughs> the plug when it the came to, to candy. In the first yeah. act, you're like, you come out of high school. You yeah. graduated. Yeah. You graduated? Because Gra- I don't take yeah. it for granted. I, I don't know how I graduated, but I graduated. You graduated. Yeah. And then what? So I now need to figure out what the next play was. Typically after high school, is either college or get a job. I went to uh, JC, a junior college called Pierce. And another opportunity presented itself, which was throwing parties. So, okay. So I like, I enjoy, the beautiful thing was everything, every way that I earned income, I actually enjoyed it and would have did it for free. Gotcha. So I was attending these events and the opportunity saying, okay, if you always here, might as well start letting people know about the parties as well. So I became a sub promoter. Gotcha. They'll pay me $5 for every person I brought to the, to the club. Gotcha. Because I understood marketing through my experience of selling candy, I didn't realize those skills, soft skills and hard skills transferred to the, club promoter. the club promoter. So I'm in the club, having a good time, documenting the process. At that time, you posted pictures on MySpace, showing people about what type of experience, lifestyle we're having, and that would entice people to come. And then we'll print out thousands of flyers, and go out, passing out flyers, and distributing awareness to this specific event. Thousands of people show up, and the doorman will be at the door. Who invited you? Maddie. Who invited The list will be crazy. A long list of Maddie, 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 Maddie. And I went from a soap promoter to a, a main to promoter, promoter, right? But I realized as a main promoter, I'm now a little bit more invested, meaning that me more being invested financially, I can lose now. Before, right. I could, it's just straight profit. I don't have no expenses. I just get what I, what I bring in. I eat with a kill. So now, at, the, at these end of the parties, I'm now losing money. <laughs> I did the same exact work before, but now I'm not making money because the event didn't make money because of bad management or whatever the case may be. So I have to figure out another source of income. Gotcha. Right? I wasn't too, I wasn't too mad about the income at the time because I didn't have that many expenses. But once I moved out of my dad's house, that's when it, got, it became an issue. because Why I did you move? Pay. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a good question. So I, the parties that I used to host were in Hollywood, L.A. I lived 30 minutes away in the valley. I didn't drive, so I'll take the train to these events. I'll come home at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I was throwing parties seven days a he week. You wasn't having it. At all. I'll come home, like, my eyes will be <laughs> bloodshot red. My dad was, thought I was doing drugs. That's how bad it was. I was losing weight. And, and he said, yeah, you can't live like this. He said, I'm not going to live like this. Yeah. He said, you can't. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. Then he said, you have a choice. You can stay or, or, and, and stop doing what you're doing or you can leave. It was easy decision. I'm just going to leave. Right. So like you said, I'm not going to live like this. You can't. So I left. And now I got a $600 a month payment that I have to pay for. I got more expenses. And then I said, all right. I was blaming the party promoters, for the other party promoters, other partners for me not making my money. I'm not making income like that. So I decided to throw my own event, Solo Dolo. Right. I'm a, I'm a you lost more money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like, okay. I just do it myself. I'm the one bringing all the people. I do it myself. I lost even more money doing yeah. mansion parties. On the front end, it looked beautiful. Everybody was there. Everybody's having fun. But on the back end, I had to pay the DJs, the security, the party room, the ball girl, everything. I didn't know business. I knew marketing. Right. I didn't know the business aspect of managing operations, just all that stuff. So I had to transition. I went back to helping and partnering up with other party promoters. But here's the thing. Me being at the, all the top of events, I'm meeting all these different celebrities that are coming in. Most people, when they meet celebrities, they don't have anything of value to trade with them, anything to share. So I realized, me looking in hindsight, having value and knowing how to present it at the proper time is key, which goes back to opportunities, right. spotting opportunities. So I developed at Pierce College. I went to Pierce College. I never went to class. I had classes. I never went to class. I went to computer lab. I learned how to design, graphic design. And that was inspired because my MySpace page, I wanted my MySpace page to be the best looking MySpace page wanted to be popping. On, the, on the internet. So anytime somebody sees a flyer, they see the one who's promoting flyer, like, oh, he has a cool MySpace page, he must have a cool event going on. 
But in order to have that cool MySpace page, I either have to hire somebody or do it myself. Did they have the funds to hire anybody, so I did it myself. I learned HTML code. I learned JavaScript. I learned how to code. I became a, a graphic designer, and that graphic design allowed me to design flyers for other party promoters. Gotcha. Party promoters, they need flyers, like three flyers per day, different events. There's a morning event. There's a brunch event, day party, after hours. I'm charging $7 per flyer. I was making more, flyer, more money doing the flyers, designing the flyers, than actually promoting them. It was crazy, generating thousands of dollars per week designing. And through that income, I was able to reinvest it into more infrastructure, branding, all that good stuff. But then I transitioned from graphic design for flyers to offering these same services to the celebrities. They needed mixtape covers. Gotcha. They needed the website design. And now I'm a value. So when we meet, it's not just, oh, what's up, Maddie? It's more so when we're going to do business, we're going to sit down and, and network and actually get to the work part. Gotcha. A lot of people who network, they cast nets, but they don't never get to the work because they don't know what value, they don't understand their own value, which goes back to myself. I had a lot of self-awareness of what I was good at, what I was bad at, um, things I was lacking in per with my personality, things I, I need to grow, and that came from my mentor, but helping me put a mirror in my face to really say, how are you gonna win if you're not right within? That gotcha. was really big for me. Who was that? Um, Lauren Hill. Okay, Lauren Hill. Yeah, people, a lot of times we listen to rap music or any type of genre of music, we don't really pull out the gems. I know rap gets a lot of, uh, um, criticism. The new rap. Yeah, new rap list. I grew up in the 80s. Yeah, and it's fair. But for me, I know how to, again, spot opportunities. Extract. Extract. Extract the opportunities, right? They say what? Uh, uh, pull out the meat. Leave gotcha. the bones. Right? So I didn't know how powerful that song was. People recite it all the time, but I, I really that really touched me. Where how am, I gonna win, how, am I, how am I not gonna win if I'm not right within? Which inspired my personal development. I started reading books. Heavy. First book. Um, Jim Rohn. First, all his series of books. Every single book he had. Second author. Um, I had, at that time, at that time, uh, I don't know if you know, Eric Rees. No. Yeah, Eric Rees, he has a book called Lean Starter Methodology. It showed how to start businesses the lean way without having to invest too much money, resources, energy, and time in the early stages. So I understood my why. So I started reading these books, How to Win Friends and Influence People, how to think and grow rich, um, rich dad, poor dad, all these basic, they call them, uh, <laughs> they call these books that they always recommend in jail. They call it jail. Self-help? Jail, well, they said jail reads. The, oh. the books that everybody mentions, but they don't actually put it in, in action. Okay. I put it in action. That was really key for me because there's, there's a framework that I use. The framework is when somebody's talking, um, the first step I'm trying to help with people when they're listening, at least, is the motivation aspect. So motivation is inspiring reasons to move. I understood that. But then there's the inspiration, helping them believe that they can do it too. That was really big. As somebody who's very analytical, I'm really straightforward. All bars, no fluff. I don't like the, the fluffy stuff. Direct. So in the early stages of my entrepreneurship, I really didn't like the motivational speakers. I'm like, why are they just puffing people up? And, but I realized, I, did, I realized later on that that's key. That's key component in the early stages of listening, talking to somebody. Right, you gotta get them. Yeah, you gotta motivate, give them the reasons to move, inspire belief that they can do it too. But then the education. A lot of motivational speakers and inspirational people they don't move into the educational space of teaching them um, what to do, gotcha. what to do next. I was really big on the what, but I still needed to know. I needed to teach the why, which is in the inspirational, motivational stage. So after the educational stage of what to do. The next stage for me was the uh, instructional stage, which was not what to do, but how to do it. Gotcha. That was really big for me, that framework. So the motivation, inspiration, education, inspiration, and then it really leads to the activation. And once I started using that framework with everything I did, everything I consumed, I started putting things in the right place. The right people in my right places, the way I dress, the, the content I consume via movies, so, no, no. apps, So where along that. that line did you get the Burberry suit? <laughs> so that's 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 even a bar itself because I wear I wear suits all all day every day because of um, I'm in church primarily. However, I'm now tapping into a new audience, and this new audience they don't want to see the suits. Gotcha. They want to see the because um, the, right now in this age, 2021, us infopreneurs who share their experiences in business, we're the new rappers. <laughs> we're 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 creating albums in, in the form of courses. So musicians, what they do is they take their thoughts out of their brain, their experiences out of their brain, they put it, they pen it on paper. And then they get into a booth and they start rapping it and singing it 
and, and musically, um, phonically sure. right. delivering it, that content that was in their brain. Me as an educator in business, an ex somebody who shares my experiences, I do the same exact thing. I take my intellectual property, take it out of my brain, put it on paper, format it, sequence it, my bars, and then record the content and deliver it, distribute it. Same exact way. To the point where I, I create my album, my course, I go on interviews, go on tour, same thing like an artist. Yeah. Same thing like a musician. I just came off tour. Yeah. The baseline is you were doing you were being successful mm -hmm. in your first life. Fair. And then when did you have that aha moment Man, of that's a good question. I definitely did have a transition in my life. When it came to um, substance of life, uh, I had success early on, but the substance wasn't really there because um, I believe my foundation is, is my faith. But I was doing all this stuff without having the faith, so I had to reset. I literally had to reset. What does that look like? My reset was, I, used a, a, I studied a, a model called Splashed. It's a splash model. The S stands for knowing my story. So for every year that I was born, this was key for me, super key. For every year that I was born, I'm 31 now, so I was born in 1990. So from 1990 to 2021, I write down the year. I write down every impactful thing that happened in my life in that year, from relationships, schooling, education, jobs I've had, every impactful thing, I wrote it down, just like I'm writing my own documentary. Right. A lot of people, they wait until they pass or create some type of huge impact for them to think that they need a biography or documentary. I believe that everybody's impactful in some form or way. They just aren't sharing their experiences. So for me, in order for me to share my experience, I have to know my own experience. Sometimes our memories are horrible. Right. We forget what happened last year, three years ago. Last week. So for me, for me, so for me documenting my story, I use that framework. And I start to realize things about myself that I've completely forgot. I was doing my, my exercise. I'm like, wow, that's why I think the way I think. That's the way I talk. That's the reason why I talk the way I talk. Just how I dress meet these type of people because these are the things that happen in my life but in the early stages like the 1990 to 96 i really didn't have too much memory on it which opened up the door an opportunity for me to have conversations with my dad on a whole nother level got you whole nother level. break those down my dad started pulling out pictures i've never seen of myself ever at three years old four years old because i'm trying to figure out what happened in 1993 Oh, I got some pictures. My dad pulled out a whole photo he, album. Dr. Document came he, genetically. He's the king of documentation. <laughs> People call me the document, the king. I didn't realize my dad is the, was been doing this. Genetics. Right. And uh, <laughs> see, I just realized at this very moment, that's where I got that from, yeah. my documentation. It was clear to realize. me when you said it. <laughs> see, that's the beautiful thing about sharing your experiences. So my dad pulled out these, these, um, these photo albums, started sharing stories. He told me a little bit deeper on why he got divorced. Like, all these conversations we never had before happened because the process started of self-awareness through the splash model. Long story short, after the S, I moved into the P. The P was identifying my personalities. Key personalities. The positive personalities I have, neutral, and the negative. Once I formatted and used that framework, I started to realize what I need to work on. Gotcha. What negative personalities I need to work on. And for my positive personalities, what I need to double down on. Gotcha. So I can embrace, you know what I'm saying? But the beautiful thing about answering the questions about what is my personality type and identifying it was it required asking other people too. Because I can have a biased view about what my personality Slight is. Slight bias. Right. <laughs> so I had to humble myself to ask questions and receive it so I can have a 360 perspective about Matty J. And that really helped a lot. So I went from the S to the P to the L and splashed. The L stands for all of my life lessons major life lessons that I believe that God put me through to learn from so I can be able to share those experiences with others and, um, for me, per personally grow. And because nobody documents their L's, they keep repeating them over and over. Got you. Over and over. They keep failing the test. And even if they pass the test, that same test might come back around. And if you don't remember what you did the first time. You fill it the second time. That's what, I, that's what I realized. So I wrote down every life lesson. So the A stands for abilities. My ability um, to recognize what I'm good at, what I'm good at, and what I'm lacking in when it comes to abilities. So I made a half chart. What am I really good at? My skills, my trades. And what am I really lacking in? And I, I was able to compare, contrast, and 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 have awareness, at least awareness of it. So me having the awareness of it will subconsciously show itself when I have conversations with people or when I'm doing training, whatever the case might be. Then there's the, um, the S, 
stands for scares. I need to identify my scares. It was supposed to be fears, but it, it messed up the acronym. So scares <laughs> was, was put in place to identify some of the things that I would cause in my mind that would hinder my process of moving forward, hitting my destination, hitting my goals. And that allowed me to look my monsters in, in, in the face and realize that they were really fears, false evidences appearing to be real. And that really helped a lot with that process of me writing it down. So I realized, well, that's not really an issue because based on this L's, all these lessons, I've overcome this fear before. Right. And it's how everything is interconnected on this model. And then there was the H, my habits. <laughs> As a high-level networker who goes out and meets high, impactful, successful entrepreneurs, um, a routine is very important for me because the time management is key. So for the habits, I need to identify my good and bad habits so I can be able to optimize my time, optimize my conversations, and optimize the opportunities that are presented in my way. Because I get, as somebody who has influence, I get presented opportunities left and right. Right. And it's kind of hard to manage and say no, which influenced me to read the book, How to Say No. <laughs> but that's another story. But anyways, the H was habits. The E was really big for me. It stands for the events that educate me, inspire um, empower me and entertain me. A lot of people never realize what type of content that they're consuming. And when I wrote down the content that I was consuming that educated me, empowered me, and um, uh, entertained me, I started to realize, well, maybe these things aren't the things that need to entertain me. <laughs> I need to figure out, because if I want to be a basketball player, typically, what places should you find a basketball player? In the gym. In the real, it's real simple. <laughs> Those are the places where you'll find somebody who's looking to hit that specific goal of going to NBA or going pro, whatever the case might be. So me identifying myself as somebody who wants to do a certain activity, I need to make sure that the things I'm consuming, the things that are entertaining me, the things that are empowering me are aligned with that. And that was really big. And the D in Splash, the, the finale was the declaration of my core values. Um, a lot of us are... Don't if you. I was. I, I really tested this exercise. I asked a lot of people, "Do you know your core values?" A lot of people don't know what their core values are. They're just living. It's living like zombies. I was just living like a zombie because I didn't identify what my core value was. And I, anytime somebody asks me, I can easily tell them. My core value is unity. It's very clear that everything I do, I'm always trying to bring together um, people to to be able to accomplish the goal in unity. My another core value I have is resourcefulness. I realized that's the reason why I document everything. So when people ask questions, I can be able to show them exactly how it was done, which tied into my resourcefulness. Tell us about your business. Son. Yeah, so I went from graphic designer to web developer, designing websites, and that turned into designing my own website where I was selling T-shirts. I realized one of the best, I wouldn't even call it hustles, opportunities to generate income with a low barrier of entry is selling T-shirts. As long as you have a message. For me, I had a message of being straightforward. Um, excuse my French, I discontinued the brand, but my brand was called Likeable Assholes. On social media, I'll post content that people will love, like, dang, you so raw with it, you're like an asshole, but for some reason, you're still likable. So I said, it was a trigger. I was like, okay, let me look that up, go on the internet. I went to GoDaddy to see if the domain was available. It was available, likableassholes.com. I bought the domain for $12. And I said, okay, I'm going to start a brand around this. And I put the brand logo out after I designed it. The beautiful thing about me learning design, I can, you can do design my own stuff. So I designed a logo, and I put it out there to test, get feedback. Because that's one of the biggest processes for brand development for me, is after you come with an idea, in the ideation phase, I need to validate it in some way or some form. I may like it, but I want to know if my audience likes it. So I'll post it on my Instagram, or at that time I think it was Twitter, and the feedback was like, yo, this is dope. We need this. I didn't realize there are so many other likable assholes that existed. So I realized that I was the one volunteering to rally up the troops and come together as a community. And what we're going to do is use this T-shirt, which I call a jersey, to be able to do it. So I designed the T-shirt, which we call a jersey. And me calling it jersey at that time made me realize that this is a team. It's a sport. We need to come together. We need core values. We need a mission statement. We need a way to have funding. We need to know what game we're playing, just like a team. Right. Know the players, all, the, all that good stuff. The brand blew up. Thousands of orders per day. I'm shipping packages out of the crib. USPS, 
UPS, DHL coming to my de- my my door every day, truckloads of packages going out. But I ran into another issue. Again, I know how to rally up the troops. I know how to market. I know how to team bring the building. visuals. Running a team. But I didn't. Matter of fact, I didn't have a team. I was doing everything by myself. <laughs> and not only that, I didn't know about shipping and fulfillment, customer su- service. You just made a T-shirt. I just made a T-shirt, a dope T-shirt that popped. Now, 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 now you got to actually run a business. Get it out there, run a business. All right. So I realized in hindsight that personal development is key because if I'm disorganized in my personal life, I'm going to be disorganized in my organization. And an organization is supposed to be organized. But here's the thing. I didn't have all the pieces and framework on how to build a business. I wasn't taught it. So that's when my mentor kicked in and gave me, gave me a lot of frameworks on how to do this business development and build like a house, should be, how it should be with the foundation. So my thing is this. Mm. You're successful. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I told you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for your success. I applaud mm. your success. By God's grace. And you know what I'm saying? I always, I'm always happy to see you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We've done a lot of talking, but you haven't shared <laughs> that 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 true thing. The thing I wanted you to teach about off rip. So we talked about okay, success, the parties, the growth, lessons yeah. from dad, reflections, right. you're know saying. Now Right. You, you know what the people need to hear. Yeah, so what comes from my faith? This, the faith. The faith. Yeah, yeah. So no matter what religion somebody subscribe to, I believe they most religions, I'm not saying all, they have some type of foundation on how to live on this earth. And how to coexist with other individuals on this earth. How does yours teach? Yeah, so for me, um, it was easy. If I focus on spiritual matters and heavenly things and following the example that was given by Christ and the apostles in the book of Acts, the actions of the apostles, I'll be able to have a core foundation I need to be able to move forward. Basic principles like um, giving more than you receive. Um, Basic principles of practicing what you preach. Basic principles of being a good Samaritan. And that's just basic principles. I'm not even talking about the high spiritual things that God wants us to do. Um, in order Give us one of the high ones. Basis. Give, make them stretch. All right. So for me, spiritually, um, it's just a matter of knowing the definition of love according to God. Break it down. <laughs> so uh, spiritually, God actually gave us the best example of love in the Bible which was um, the ultimate sacrifice, dying for you, right? If I was to ask anybody, would you die for me? I, I probably wouldn't have anybody to really say. Not, not too many volunteers. Right. Probably closest would be your mother, uh, maybe your father, and maybe it starts doing them down when you start asking. But um, there was the perfect example of sac- sacrifice. So by God's grace, God doesn't ask us to just go dying for people um, physically, but sacrificing yourself and doing to others where they you're helping benefit them you're helping um serve them in a way whether it's physically or spiritually servitude was a key piece of getting forward moving forward anytime i was in the room i was looking for an opportunity to serve i was asking the right questions and when i was asking the right questions i was getting the right opportunities to be able to serve and be of value and be an asset so that was one of the biggest things i've learned um spiritually um but on uh, the more enti- like direct spiritual side, it's just a matter of following God's commandments, God's I, teachings. I, I know I teach, and I teach Jesus' lessons from the Mount of Olives. Right, right, right. When he was going to be turned over. Right. And he went and he prayed. Right. He told his people, stay here. He went to stone, throw away, however you want to say it. He went up the hill and he prayed. And the prayer that he said is, Father, let this cup pass me. Yeah. Then he came down the hill and they were sleeping the whole, but he said that prayer three times. Mm -hmm. And to me, let this cup pass me was, I don't want to be crucified. Yeah. And we know the strongest man ever walked the face of the earth with the clearest purpose ever given to any one person and with direct access to the strongest person in the universe, didn't want to fulfill the purpose he was given. He had to ask for help three times Mm -hmm. to fulfill the thing, not my will, but your will. But he had to ask three times before he was granting the strength and angels to carry out his deeds. So sure. I always say to people, if Jesus, the strongest man to ever walked the face of the earth, Correct. needed to ask for help mm. to fulfill his clear purpose, yeah. why don't you? Asking for help is key. It's key. But we have to get rid of uh, a key personality disorder, which is um, arrogance and pride. 
once I feel like when we f get rid of our arrogance and pride or be aware, aware of one situations where we're being arrogant, we can be have more humility. And a lot of people have uh, different definitions of what they think humility is. My favorite quote is humility isn't thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. And always putting somebody's concerns um, in front of yours, as long as it's aligned with yours. Right. It doesn't c contradict or um, um, disrupt it. But that was one of the key pieces. Humility is key for everything. I think anything that goes wrong is because of arrogance. Everything that goes wrong. <laughs> now, in my life, when I was in prison, I decided to do something different. Mm -hmm. I wrote my list out. I wanted to go to Harvard University, this audacious goal. Mm -hmm. Then when I got my list and my reverse engineer plan, I stood in the mirror. I said, now what's inside of me that's stopping this from happening? Mm. Then I worked on that. That's list. a key question. Nobody ever asked those questions. That's why they don't get far. They ask, they blame external reasons for their internal problems. Right. And the word issue, when you say it real slow, it sounds like it's you. And that was one of the key pieces for me when it comes to accountability. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, so I asked, what's in me that's stopping me? And I fixed that. I fixed my pain. I fixed my, and I got to my purpose. Mm -hmm. And I had this thing. I'm going to die one day. I'm going to die. Everybody I've known to walk this place for, uh, Enoch didn't die. I have an Enoch goal. Well, I want to be walk off with God. That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so that's back in Genesis. Enoch. But the, yeah. It says, such and such lived 900 years, and God came and yeah. he died, he died, and Enoch walked off. I yeah. said, I want the Enoch story. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> Baseline. I know I'm going. And I've seen multiple people die. I've helped people through their transitions and family members. I've mm -hmm. been to funerals and I've been to graveyards. And I started thinking, my grandmother passed. And my grandmother planned her own funeral because she had cancer. Mm -hmm. And she did everything but, you know, she talked to the grave digger, to the, to the pastor, everybody in between. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was a beast. <laughs> I started working on my tombstone. When I die. They're going to chisel in the first part. They're going to say Andre Norman, 1967 to 3050. Then they're going to say Harvard Fellow, because I made that happen. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to say Honorable Son. I've done things for my parents to justify Honorable Son. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on the things that are going to be chiseled into my, groom, my mm -hmm. tombstone. I'm not leaving it up to other people sitting around in a funeral home crying. That's hard. What should we say about him and his final appetite so what are you gonna say but what's gonna be chiseled into your stone uh i'm trying to live that uh walk with god and experience no death too is it like he but might, it's still gonna but, be a stone but uh, if there's gonna be a stone one thing would be for sure it would be um a quote that i i really i really live by um is it goes back to the giving aspect um, um my mentor told me that i know it's um when you give you, you receive. I know not to give to receive, but I know the more that I give, the more that I do receive. So I want to create a mindset for people, for my tombstone, for it to say that, um, to not focus on the, the, the income, but focus on the impact. That's a long chisel. So yeah. You're so not going to get all I, that. Yeah, so the, the bar will be. I know you be, got money, right? Yeah. The, Your tombstone's not going to be that The big. bar will be focus on the impact over the income, just like that, because that's, that's, when they focus on that, they're good. And focus on impact, not income. Yeah, impact, not income. Because so. you make bigger plays. Because most people in this world, they're focused on generating income. Right. Like, n most people. I got you. But if they focus on the impact of how they can help people. But you, okay, you've got that. You've technically done that. So that can be, if you pass today, yeah. that could be chiseled on it. Fair. What else do you want put on there? You got you got a long. You're 31. Uh, to be you honest, got a long way. I would have to sit down and think about. You this. haven't thought about. I haven't thought about it. That, that question was profound, because nobody thinks about the the, the process of death. But every it's day, inevitable, inevitable for most people. For I everybody, think, most. I think about it every day. When yeah. I was in prison, I used to wake up every morning at 5:30 because I was a boss. If you want to call it that, I say, <laughs> "Who's gonna try to kill me today? Not who wants to, but who's gonna try today?" Mm -hmm. because I control and I have access and whatever the story. But there was always those people who wanted my job. Mm -hmm. And the way you get my slot is you stab me in the head and right. you kill me right. or you maim me. Right. So I'm like, who's going to try today? Right. And I, every morning at 530, I sit on my bed and I figure it, figure it out and I go see him first. <laughs> so I need you to intentionally. So I, Intentions. A, oh, yeah. Key. A lot of us don't have knowing that we just get pushed by the wind. Sometimes things are cool to be spontaneous. 
But if we're a little bit more intentional, we'll be having a little confidence in our strides. What is your closing that you'd want to say to We have people who are struggling. Yeah. And the objective of this right now is the freedom from that struggle. Yeah. And to let them know that a greater life is possible. Yeah. So if that's a greater life through servanthood, if that's a greater house, a greater life through belief or what, what is what is it? Give it to them. Yeah, it's just what I keep preaching, self-awareness. That was the key piece for any type of development, whether it's business development, team development, relationships, um, is understanding yourself. So for me, relationships, I love the, the, the ship part. Ships take you places, whether it's a friendship, companionship, um, anything, any type of ship needs you to take you place. But in order for you to know where you're going, you need to know where you're at. And that requires self-development, self-awareness. And I did this through a self-awareness test, and that's like the splash method. But there's right. other ways to be able to have self-awareness by asking the right questions and asking the right people. What is your life without your faith? Oh, there's, there's no life without faith. Zero. No, you had it before. I mean, did I? Yeah, you did. Did you, I? You was all through high school selling candy, doing parties on the West Coast. So what is your life? I feel like I was faith? a walking zombie. But you were walking. <laughs> but you were still here. Fair, hitting. fair, fair, fair. So the faith just brought, just gave me the life I needed. It gave me the, the second chance, you can say. Second act. It gave me, gave my second act to to um to have substance and meaning, and not and ha have an empty uh, empty way of life. So brother Maddie. Yes, sir. We're dealing with people who are inside, locked up in some form of fashion. Mm -hmm. And I know you said one of your key successes to bridge you to the life you're in now was a mentor. Yep. What do you think we should say to people who are coming out relative to mentorship? Because some people think, I did my time, I'm good, <laughs> I got it, I'm set up, my uh, girl got me, my mom got me. Whatever their thing is, they think they're set and they don't need help. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not. So for me, mentors, coaches, trainers, I treat my personal life like a sports team. A sports team has those same components. They have the coaches, they have the trainers, and it's going to be very difficult to, to get that championship if we don't have those, those key roles that allow us to have the motivation, instructions, training that we need. So for me, I had my mentor, but the question might be is how did I get my mentor? How did I find my mentor? Um, I put in work, enough work to show that I was serious about activation. Mentors, people who have done ex really amazing things at high levels, they really don't want to waste time with individuals who don't, aren't serious. Gotcha. So I showed I was serious by doing little things, presenting myself in a way, or if it's, if it's nothing grand, it's just a matter of this is what I've done so far, and this is what I need to get to this destination. I believe you have the experience, you have the knowledge to be able to help me activate it. And I promise you making a little commitment to be able to activate it because that's what fulfills a lot of mentors, the case studies, the success stories. Gotcha. So that's how I was able to attract my mentor by continuously listening, humbling myself, activating it. And that helped him fulfill his, his position of being a, a, a mentor. To her. So the 300,000 people who are going to hear your podcast – yeah, you just became mentors too. Yeah, yeah. Most people just read the book; they don't study the person who wrote the book. So, how do they study you more? Um, my documentary. So, the same way I study Michael Jordan, Warren Buffett, um, Martin Luther King. I've never met these individuals. I feel like I know them because their story, their life was documented to the point where I can tap into it. And that's why I'm talking about how passive impact is important. If we don't document our process, you're never going to be able to have people who are going to be. Um, living hundreds of years later, tap into it and be inspired by it. And so that's, that's what I did. I was able to tap into their, their story, activate what they did right, just excluded what I believe was in alignment with what I needed to do, and was able to execute. Yeah, I mean, the entire Christian faith is, is activated by the Bible. Activation, that's key. That's key. I just want to say, man, I appreciate you coming out. Amen. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. You know Definitely, of course. And I appreciate you. Matty what you J do is in the building. The the platform and the space that you're in, it doesn't get too much of that real rawness, and especially in the digital space we're in. A lot of people are doing active impact. They're going in the prisons, but it's not really creating that passive impact because they're not tapped into the YouTube channels. They're not tapped into the social media. They're not tapped into the podcast. They're not tapped into anything that has that evergreen 
content feel. So I'm glad that this is happening. This is Second Acts signing off. You know what I'm saying? But we're not going away. <laughs> we'll see you soon with another powerful story. Yes, sir. I identified if this was going to serve me or be something that was going to bring me back or be a detriment to my life.